brought to uh, the new world um, with, with this really utopian vision of building a city upon a hill and establishing you know, God's um, people on earth and all of this. The first things they built were a prison and a, and a gibbet. So it is the problem with every utopia. What do you do with people who don't fit your plan? And um, prisons have been used for all sorts of things, including getting rid of your political enemies, uh, which makes me a little bit worried about Mr. Harper's because um, the crime rate has gone down and we're building a lot more space than it would appear we need right now. So uh, is it going to be full of environmentalists or what? <laughs> You know, I'm waiting for the knock at the door, and anybody who was, uh, that's uh, not, not such a joke, and anybody who was born when I was, which was 1939, uh, is, remembers what the Nazis did with prisons and prison enclosures, and remembers what Stalin did with the gulag system, which was even, which was horrific. Uh, so, you know, get rid of somebody. And before that, it was the it was sending convicts to North Carolina. By the way, British did it, and then to Australia. And just to make you feel even more worried, what the Australians did, uh, or what the British did to Australia, when they realized they'd send a lot of men there, but these were not balanced off by those uh, calming influences, um, women. Uh, they didn't have enough women who had committed serious enough crimes to be transported, so they lowered the bar for women. They made uh, transportable offenses for women much more minor than they were for men. Here we have a question. There's a microphone that's roaming around, I'm but you can way. shout as well if you'd like. I can project. Okay, yeah. project. I'm thinking about the librarians, I'm thinking about the people that look after our water, I'm thinking we owe them a debt to have a living wage. Do we not? Yes, we do. Yes, of course we do. Um, because if they don't have a living wage, they will vacate those those jobs, and those jobs will not exist anymore. And there and there will go those services that they have been provided. Were so you the, surprised? the question was librarians and uh, water keepers, essentially, mm. people looking after the the uh, the testing of the water to make sure that we're not all going to get E. coli. And and also the garbage man retweeted a petition. Uh, having to do with the city council's plan to close libraries, and then retweeted a few other things, such as the fact that Mr. Uh, Ford, to Mr. Um, Ford, comma Doug, uh, said, that, <laughs> said that he would close libraries in a heartbeat, and that he had more Tim Hortons in his constituency than there were libraries, which was wrong. Uh, he also didn't put it together that people who drink in Tim Hortons also go to libraries. I <laughs> thought it was a great divide, which shows how much he um, knows about that. Uh, so then I woke up, you know, I went up north where there is no um, Wi-Fi, and um, I came back to find out that the place was covered with M Margaret Atwood for mayor buttons. And, uh, people had gone to City Hall with my, a printout of my face, which must have been a surreal nightmare. Uh, and, and I had a whole bunch of new friends who were saying, Margaret, Margaret, we recognize you. <laughs> so whatever it was, it certainly, um, but, but it wasn't me, I have to say. It was the citizens of Toronto who piled onto that petition in such huge numbers that they crashed it immediately. And it was that it was at that, that moment that it became a news story. So it's the people's support for their libraries, which they love and adore, and they, they piled onto the Twitter with all sorts of stories about um, their experience with the library and their three week old baby had just got its first library card and when they first moved to Canada the library saved their life because they could go in there and read books in their own language and also learn English and um, the teenagers who use it to study, and it's just, it's huge. It's really huge, and it is the best, um, it is a deeply loved system, and it's very much used, which is why the councillors in all constituencies, some sort of light bulb went on over their head, and they started swearing allegiance to their library. Um, so they get elected next time. You know, it boils down to that. I don't have any power in this affair myself at all. Question right question. Here. Uh, one of the things that came out of this was Doug Ford saying that 
basically you didn't have any power because you weren't a city councilor. Oh yeah, it was even more outrageous than that. He, he said I shouldn't express an opinion unless I got elected and went down to City Hall, which yes. is uh, contrary to received ideas about democracy and free speech. Last time I looked, yes. <laughs> last time I looked, anybody can have an opinion. Uh, maybe a wrong opinion, but they can have it, oh, and they can express it. You can be in City Hall and have a wrong opinion, too. You can be in City Hall and have a wrong opinion, that's true. Uh, have you considered that? Because you'd be elected in all party. I would be a terrible, terrible politician. Why do you think so? I know so. <laughs> I know so. I've, I've been the chair of various things. I'm very bad at meetings. I want them to be over. Uh, <laughs> to move them along, I, I'm just, I just wouldn't be good at it. I just know that. And you need your time for writing as well. It's not only that. I, I would be rotten. Oh, okay. trust, trust, <laughs> trust me on this. I mean, I might be funny. But, uh, I mean, Charlotte Witten was funny and had hats, but she was also a good politician. I would just have the hats. Go ahead. We have the gentleman right here. The, the library story was a Twitter story. Um, that, is, that is what happened. And uh, I, I think that there is a lot of, I won't say just Twitter, but, but online, um, online communities, shall we say, uh, can have a great deal of influence. But, but every sort is, is two-edged, so that the influence can be negative. And also, it is true what what they say in Year of the Flood, where the God's Gardeners people do not use computers. Mm. And what they say is, if you can see it, it can see you. And that is in fact true. So if you want to be invisible, don't go online, don't use a credit card, and don't use a bank machine. And we know a lot of it, and don't use your phone unless you follow the rules and the girl with the dragon tattoo and take out the SIM card and pound it to pieces with a rock. <laughs> We're learning all these things from these crime novels and, and such. Um, but it is, it, when you think of what sorts of plots you can have, um, they're very interested, but they're very uh, influenced by new technologies. The, 